You know those websites where you start scrolling and after a few seconds, you get one of those pop-up banners. It's great for conversion, but how do you do this in Framer? Well, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can build one with zero code all in Framer. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside of Framer. And as you can see, I've got quite a simple landing page here. Now, what we wanna do is actually create an overlay, but we're going to set the trigger for that overlay to either be time-based or page scroll-based. So for example, if you want to create a modal in Framer, you would usually set an overlay. So let's say I would select a section of my website. I would go down to overlays on the properties panel here and I would set a either relative or fixed overlay. A relative being for like a drop down or a tooltip, but a fixed overlay is for modals. So when we wanna take up the entire screen. Now, the only problem with this is we can set the trigger to be on click or on hover. So if I click or hover on a section of my website, yes, I can set the trigger, but let's say I wanna set the trigger to make it that when a user scrolls halfway down my page, maybe they're about to go off the page, maybe they've been on the page for a certain period of time, then we actually wanna open our overlay and create our pop-up modal. We can't actually do this easily in Framer until now. So let's actually go ahead and look at how we can achieve this. So I'm gonna draw a new frame on the canvas here and we'll call this our trigger. Now I'm actually gonna drag this right to the top of my page here. And we're gonna set the width and height to be one pixels. And we're also gonna set the opacity to be zero. So we've essentially created a very invisible frame that no one's ever gonna to touch. And we're also gonna set the positioning here to be absolute. And we're gonna pin it to the top left of our page. Now, I'm also gonna copy and paste in this component, which you'll be able to find in the link down below, which essentially allows us to set a custom trigger for an overlay in Framer. So we can set the trigger to be on mouse leave. So when somebody actually tries to scroll away from the page, we can set the trigger to be on delay as well. So we might wanna say after five seconds of a user being on this page, then we open an overlay. And we can also set the trigger to be on scroll. So let's say somebody scrolls 50% of the entire page, then we might actually want to open our pop-up modal. So now when we have this component inside our trigger here, what we're gonna do is add a new overlay to that trigger frame. And we're gonna make it a fixed overlay. And let's set the Z index here to be 10. So it appears on top of everything else. And let's just draw a new frame inside this overlay, which will be our actual pop-up banner. And let's just call this our banner here. And just for now, let's center this. And let's also set the radius to be 12 pixels and let's make it white. Okay, doesn't look good so far, but let's actually test this out. So you will notice that when I preview my page, if I wait one, two, three, four, five seconds, then it's actually going to open that overlay. Similar, if I scroll say halfway down the page, then again, we're going to get that overlay opened. Okay, great. So now we can actually go ahead and start designing our overlay. So we might want to include some text here, which might say, check out our new store. And we also might want to have some text underneath, which might suggest a discount code. So I might say, use the checkout code SHELACE25 to get 25% off your next order. And let's size this up a little bit. Let's say this is the two pixels. And this one here can be a bit smaller in terms of weights. And let's also wrap these inside their own frame. So we'll add a stack here. We'll set the distribute to be to the start and we'll set the alignment to be to the left. And let's add a fixed width, let's say 350 pixels. And you'll notice we kind of get this overflow of the text here. So we just need to make sure that we set the width to be 100% so it actually overflows correctly. And let's just make sure this goes across two lines and we'll do the same with our paragraph content here. So we'll set the width to be a hundred percent and that's starting to look quite nice. Let's actually bring this in a little bit more. Let's say 320 pixels. And then within this banner frame that I've got here, it's just like any other frame in Framer. So I'll turn layout on. Maybe we'll change the size of this banner. Let's say it's gonna be 700 pixels by 420 in height. 
And let's set the alignment here to be to the left. And let's also add some outer padding. Okay, this looks all right. Still pretty boring. Now I've actually got a shoe graphic here, so I might quickly grab that and put it inside our overlay. And let's actually size this up to be positioned in a way that kind of looks nice. Okay, cool. Looking pretty good so far. So again, let's preview this. So I'll preview my website. And then you'll notice when I reach a certain trigger point, then that overlay is going to appear. Now, the thing with an overlay is when I actually click away from it, it's going to close. But maybe I actually want to set a certain trigger to close that overlay that isn't just clicking away from it. Now, for example, you might actually see on a pop-up mode or sometimes where they might use a bit of what I like to call communication psychology, where they might say, no, I don't want a free discount or no, I don't want $50 off as a trigger to actually close that overlay. Or other times you might just see a little cross where it's very simple UX in terms of how you close that pop-up modal. But let's be cheeky with it and let's actually add some text in here, which might say, no, I don't want a discount. And we'll set the width of this to be fit content. So it takes up the size that it needs. And then let's also set the weight here to be a little bit bolder. And let's also change the positioning of this to be absolute. And we'll pin it to be at 25 pixels from the top and the left. So it aligns with our padding. Now, what I can do is select that text or frame on the canvas. I can go to interactions in my properties panel. And now I can set the trigger to be close overlay. So now when I actually preview this, we'll wait a few seconds for it to open up. When I actually click on, no, I don't want a discount, the overlay is going to close. Now, what if we actually want to force someone to click that in order to close the overlay? Because they can still actually just click anywhere else on the page and that overlay will close. Well, if we go into that overlay layer here, we can actually turn dismissible to be no. Meaning that when I actually preview this, let's scroll down, I can click anywhere on my page and you'll notice that overlay will not close. And the only way to close it is to click on, no, I don't want a discount. So my overlay is starting to look pretty good, but as you can tell, it's still a little bit static and kind of jumps into place. So the last thing we need to do is actually bring it to life with some subtle animation. So let's actually start within the overlay layer itself. Now we can set a preset here. So let's make it, we want it to fade in and out. And again, we'll just have to change dismissible back to no, which will fade in and out as the overlay opens. But we can actually go a step further with this banner frame here and add an appear effect. So when the overlay opens, we can play a certain animation. So let's set the preset here to be slide in bottom. And let's set the enter state to be say 100 pixels wide. So the initial state is going to be 100 pixels below where it ends up. And let's also add a transition in here. Let's set the physics to have a stiffness of 150 pixels. So now when I actually preview this, again, we'll wait a few seconds for it to load, but you will notice that now my pop-up modal is super smooth. And the only way to close it is to click on, no, I don't want a discount. So now we've created an overlay in Framer, which is triggered either by a time duration or the duration of somebody's scroll. Or even if I try to exit that page, we can actually show that modal as well. And that's how you build really powerful pop-up modals in Framer. If you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer tutorials just like it, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer videos every single week. And if you're interested in mastering Framer, like truly mastering it, feel free to check out my Ultimate Framer Masterclass, which is my A to Z course teaching you everything you need to know about Framer. And we even built a plugin so you can learn Framer in Framer. That was a lot of me just saying the word framer. But if you are interested, I'll leave the link down below. But until next time, I'll catch you later.